You know when you're starting a huge project with dozens or hundreds of moving parts and you kind of feel overwhelmed and you really wish that there was some kind of solution that you could just push the button and it all just happens? Well, there is. If you haven't heard of the AVD Accelerator, this is a free open source project available on GitHub for everybody to deploy. And the idea of it is to help you deploy AVD in a fast and consistent way so it's easy to support. Here in the overview section, there's a link right over there for the enterprise scale for AVD docs. This talks a lot about the landing zone, which can be actually deployed through a whole nother accelerator, which I'm not going to use in my environment. But you can read all about the principles and things that it covers and the specific deployment models that they have here for you to use. And the good news is for the AVD accelerator, none of this is actually required. You can build this on top of that solution, of course, but you can also use your own existing networks and identities, which means that you can build the AVD Accelerator on a brand new or existing environment. And before we start the build, we do need to answer a few questions, like what authentication method do you want to use, Active Directory or Azure Active Directory? Then which Azure region is the closest to your users and your other resources? So that way latency stays as low as possible. Also, how many users will this host pool be supporting and what apps are they going to need? Then think about your session hosts. How many users do you want to support on a single VM at the same time? And that'll then give you the total number of hosts that you need. And in general, if you have less than 100 users that this pool is going to support, I would add one additional host just in case something goes wrong. If you have more than 100 users, I'd add two. Then, which operating system do you want? Or are you going to manage your own custom image? And finally, monitoring. Do you already have Log Analytics set up for Azure Virtual Desktop? Or are you just going to lump it in with all of your other monitoring stuff? And now that you have the answer to those simple questions, which deployment type do you want to use? And you can go from Terraform to ARM and Bicep, or just the Azure Portal and even the Gov portal. And I'll just use the deploy to Azure button because code isn't as visual. But the end result will be exactly the same. And you want to select your subscription and your chosen region. And now we need a four character prefix to make sure that your resources are all unique. Then click next. Here you're going to pick that authentication method and I'll use Azure Active Directory, which means I'll be cloud joining all of my stuff and choose if you want to enroll your devices in Intune. And of course, for that to work, you would have need to have set up the MDM enrollment, but that's another video. Scroll down again. Here's where we assign the users to the host pool. And this is done with a group ID. So to find that, open a new tab and go to Azure Active Directory, go over to your groups, select the group that you want, and then you want to copy this object ID, and then jump back to the build and paste. Next, you set your local admin credentials. And don't worry if you're using another solution like Windows Laps that I did a recent video on, Laps will automatically update the local admin passwords for you. This is just to complete the build. Click next when you're ready. And now some questions about your pools. Do you want a pooled host pool or a personal host pool? And then we need to consider our load balancer algorithm. Now, I always like to choose breadth first, so that way users wait as little as possible for logins. Then we have the max session limit. This is how many users can log on to any single VM at the same time. And we covered this earlier. It's the total number of users in your pool divided by the number of hosts that you will deploy, and that's your max. Next is the app group. When your users access AVD, they can have either a full desktop or just remote applications. If you want remote apps, say yes. If you just stick with full desktops, then say no. And here is the AVD auto scale plan, which will automatically switch that load balancing algorithm from breadth to depth at different times of the day so AVD runs as efficiently as possible. And I'd recommend that for sure. And just be aware that there are some permissions that will be automatically set just to make all that magic happen. Then click next. Now the session hosts. I do suggest deploying them with availability zones to help AVD be as highly available as possible. And for the region here, this can actually be a different region than your host pools were being deployed in, and that'll happen with no impact on your AVD performance. 
but I do generally recommend putting them in the same region just to make management easier. And now if there's a hard part, and I'm not saying that there is, it's figuring out how many CPU cores and RAM will each host need to support the number of users that you're planning and whatever they need to do. Now, if you're not sure, then I just go with the default here. And as you monitor the system, you can scale up or down. So we'll want to plug in the number of VMs we want to build right here. And don't forget to add one or two, depending on if you're over or under 100 users. As for the disk, they should all be using premium in a pooled host pool. And that's because you have multiple users who are hitting that disk at the same time and you need all the performance you can get. Then we have your image. Do you want a marketplace image or a custom image? If marketplace, then which of these image versions do you want? Windows 10, Windows 11, with or without Office, Gen 1 or Gen 2? Now I'm gonna go with Windows 11 with Office, Gen 2, because that way I can use these extra security features for trusted launch. Scroll down here and now you need to enable Secure Boot and VTPM to make all of that work. And if you wanna know more about Trusted Launch and ABD, I've got another video on the channel about it, which I'll link to at the end. Click Next, and this page has all to do with your FSLogix storage. Do you want it? Yes or no? Typically you would in a pooled environment, so the next question is, what about the performance tier? Now for production, you should always use premium. But if this is just the lab or POC, then I wouldn't get mad if you pick standard. Then you need to pick the size of the file share. Now by default, FSLogix user profiles are 30 gigabytes of dynamic disk. So the profiles will start off as little 200 megabyte disks and grow over time. So you should consider what will be in your user profile so you can start thinking about what sizes you're gonna end up with. And just so I don't have to change my profile share later, I'll make this one terabyte for now and move on. Here you can create a separate file share for MSIX app attach files. And if you haven't used that yet, there's actually a lot of setup before you can really use it. So for now, I'll just leave it on no and move on. Let's click next again. And here's where that landing zone comes back into play. You can deploy the AVD accelerator on your existing networks, or you can just have it build brand new ones for you. Now, if you're using active directory authentication, you need to use an existing network because you'll need peering in place so that you can join your VMs to your domain. So click from the dropdown and select your virtual network and then your subnet. And optionally, you can use AVD's private endpoints for your FSLogix and Key Vault. Now this works by creating a dedicated network card on your VNet that represents the Azure service you wanna to talk to. If that sounds like a good idea to you, then select your VNet and your subnet where that NIC should live and scroll down again. Now, part of making those private endpoints work, you need a private DNS zone. And since this is a lab here, I'll just let it create one on its own. Click next. And if this is your lab, you may not actually need monitoring, but I'd still recommend it. That way you know what to expect when you get to production. And you can choose from a new or existing log analytics workspace for all of that AVD stuff. Along with that, you can choose to deploy some Azure policies that'll configure all of the monitoring for different kinds of resources, all to be funneled into this log analytics workspace. Since I've already got other stuff going on in Azure, I'll leave that on no and click next. Now we're almost done. Everything in Azure gets a name and these resources are no different. And don't worry, this will all be done for you. But if you have more specific naming requirements, you can turn on custom naming and fill out how you want each one of these resources named, which will be combined with the prefix that we set at the beginning. When you're ready, click next. And by default, there is a single Azure tag that'll be deployed for all of these resources. And that's the CM resource parent tag. And that'll roll up all of your AVD costs of all of the resources and all the subcomponents of those resources to make it super easy to see exactly where the costs are coming from for virtual desktop. Along with that, you can and should add your own tags that have value in your environment. And there's a bunch of suggested tags here, but if that doesn't fit with the way you do things, you can leave this on no, and then add your tags after the build is over. Finally, we're ready to click the review button. Now make sure that everything looks good to you and then create. 
This is going to take quite a while to build everything you chose, but once it's done, you'll have some new resource groups that all start off with your prefix, and they're all labeled for the kinds of resources that are in them. Over in the AVD's corner of the portal, you'll have a brand new host pool filled up with your session hosts ready to go. And your users will be able to open their AVD client, authenticate, and then they'll see some new icons to click on and get to work. Now, while you're waiting for your AVD Accelerator to finish building, you'll wanna check out this playlist that covers every one of the features that we talked about that are getting built by the Accelerator so you can understand how they all work and how you can customize them for your needs. Happy learning.